On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including Blue Origin has a plan for unlimited solar energy on the moon, while their upcoming New Glenn rocket has a mission to Mars. All while a gigantic solar flare interrupts radio communication across the Americas. There's lots to go over this week, so let's get into it. This is The Space Race. Jeff Bezos and his Blue Origin rocket company have revealed a new method for producing unlimited solar power on the moon using purely in situ resources. It's called Blue Alchemist, and it is a method to use local mineral rich materials like lunar regolith to produce solar panels without the need for water and without any unused byproducts. Here's how the Blue Origin team says it works. First, a machine, which is likely being designed as we speak, will scoop up some regolith, which is basically just moon dust, and deposit it into a reactor chamber. This chamber is a sealed environment, nothing in or out that it doesn't control. This is important because the next step requires strict controls. We know that the lunar regolith is heavy in three major materials, iron, aluminum, and silica. Those three materials can definitely be used to make solar cells, but there are a couple of problems inherent with trying to do it on the moon. First is that those elements, which make up a large part of lunar regolith, are almost always bonded to oxygen molecules, which makes them unusable for solar cell manufacturing. The silica alone needs to be 99.99% pure, one of the reasons the reactor needs to remain sealed. So, to separate those materials, the Blue Origin reactor will utilize a process called molten regolith electrolysis. Electrolysis is a method that is used to separate out the molecules of a fixed material by passing electricity through it at various intensities. Each molecule holds a different charge based on the atoms they contain, so this is a pretty effective way of cleanly gathering specific resources. But, for electrolysis to work, the material has to be fluid enough for the molecules and atoms to freely maneuver. This is usually done by suspending the material in water. But there's another way it can be done. We melt the material. This method is used in some greener versions of the steel making process, for instance, but you can see how it would be equally useful in an environment where water would either freeze or evaporate too quickly to be useful. So. The Blue Origin scientists created a very accurate lunar regolith simulation, not just using the materials in the moon's dirt, but also the percentages and inclusions that might foil the machine. Once several different mixtures of this simulated regolith were ready, they were put into a reactor and melted and then electrocuted. And it worked. The process not only collected very pure samples of the required materials, but the oxygen that was boiled off of the molten regolith was enough to put towards life support and fueled production techniques. But this is only half of the process, because the point of this was to be able to independently create solar power production on site, bypassing the need to ship solar panels from the earth. This is where the news gets a little lighter on the details. The procedures and equipment being developed by Blue Origin stand to make the company a lot of money here, so it's not surprising they're keeping this knowledge in-house for now. What we do know is that their assembly process is able to use only the materials gained from the molten electrolysis procedure to create solar cells, aluminum transmission wires, and the glass covers that will let the panels survive the harsh environment of the lunar surface for up to a decade or more. It's really hard to overstate how important this breakthrough is. NASA has been trying to figure out a way to make this process work since at least 2006. So, if Blue Origin has cracked the code here, they stand to not just make a ton of money, but they'll have freed humanity from total reliance on Earth-based production. Being able to construct any equipment, particularly electric generating equipment in space instead of having to launch it from Earth's surface is the sort of technological breakthrough that would allow humanity to really push the boundaries of what's possible for our exploration of space. One of the reasons we need such gigantic rockets in the first place is because we're trying to get things like station parts, modules, rovers, landers, and satellites all the way from the ground into space. The more weight we have to lift, 
the more thrust we need. The more thrust we need, the more fuel we need to take, which increases the weight we have to lift. This problem is called the tyranny of the rocket equation, and it describes the fact that at some point, we're going to reach a limit to how much weight we can move from the surface to orbit. And this has been known for so long that it is more or less obvious to rocket scientists that we will need to figure out a way to make spaceborne production a reality or we're not going to get very far in our exploration of the cosmos. But the ability to pull resources from the soil and use it to efficiently produce energy generating equipment is something that could be used on more than just the moon or even Mars. The regolith used in these experiments may have simulated lunar dirt, but it came from Earth, and the technicians believe they could use this same technology to create sturdy, cheap solar panels right here. If Blue Origin is able to deliver on this system, it could mean a huge change for our operations, not just in space, but on Earth. This technology is a huge leap forward. After months of hearing almost nothing from Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos' rocket company is suddenly in the news again, and they have some particularly good news. The company's upcoming New Glenn heavy lift rocket has been contracted through NASA's venture class acquisition of dedicated and rideshare launch services contract system to go to Mars. The mission will be called Escapade, meaning escape and plasma acceleration, and Dynamics Explorers. The operation will involve launching two Rocket Lab-made photon vehicles, the same device used to launch the capstone mission to the moon last year on top of a New Glenn booster. These photons will be loaded with gear to measure and test the red planet's weak magnetosphere, one of the biggest differences between Earth and Mars, in order to figure out how it got that way. The Vader program has been used to schedule several near-future launches for NASA by contracting commercial services, and this would be the first time Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket has been given a NASA contract. It has been able to secure some commercial contracts, but NASA hasn't singled it out for a Vader contract until now, despite showing clear interest in other Blue Origin projects like their Orbital Reef space station plan. The New Glenn is a heavy lift rocket, roughly comparable to the Falcon Heavy and China's Long March 5, at least in terms of operational use. It isn't quite as powerful as the Falcon Heavy, but it's designed to put payloads out as far as geostationary orbit. New Glenn is planned to have a reusable first stage and is working on getting a reusable second stage as well. It hasn't been without its troubles though. Back in September 2022, Blue Origin tried to launch a New Shepard, the New Glenn's predecessor, and was forced to abort mid-launch. The empty capsule was forced to use its escape motors to pull away from the deteriorating rocket in a maneuver that would have saved lives but would have likely injured any passengers on a crewed mission. This failure really came out of nowhere and the company had to cancel any upcoming launch activities while they determined the problem. New Shepard was a suborbital test vehicle which helped Blue Origin develop the tech that went into the New Glenn, so it's understandable that they would need to figure out what happened in the September launch before proceeding with their new rocket. That might be the reason why NASA hasn't tapped Blue Origin for any missions yet. The new Glenn hasn't even been built yet, so it would be hard for them to commit to any mission. But this is likely a sign that the rocket's development is stable enough that NASA can be confident in at least offering the job to Bezos' company. So far, there's been no word on when Escapade is due to leave the pad, but given that New Glenn's first launch is slated for late 2024, it could be a couple of years before we see Blue Origin truly join the new space race. More rockets means more missions, so we wish the New Glenn engineers the best of luck. If any of you happen to be pilots, sailors, or ham radio operators, you likely noticed a blackout of the signal from your shortwave radios on February 17th, as a massive solar flare erupted from the surface of our sun and ionized our atmosphere for over an hour. Flares and coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, are solar weather events that spew out masses of charged particles in the case of flares and plasma in the case of CMEs. They can range in strength, with flare events marked by an alphabet system, A, B, and C class being the weakest, while M and the X class events being the strongest. 
The flare that erupted on Friday the 17th was an X2.2 and came after a series of other strong flares and CME events. Apparently, the sun is experiencing its storm season or solar cycle, an 11-year progression that is marked by these sorts of extreme events. This time, the auroras were so strong, they reached down past New York, and frequencies in the 30 MHz range were disrupted and blacked out across the Americas for over an hour. Not the safest situation to be in if you're out at sea or in a small aircraft. Scientists call these effects a geomagnetic storm, and while we can't do much about space weather like this flare, storms like this show us that we're really not prepared for the disruptions that could be caused. Geomagnetic storms charge our atmosphere and can induce current in things like transformers and power wires. A strong enough storm could absolutely overwhelm our systems and shut down huge portions of aging electrical infrastructure. Unfortunately, there's not a very cost-effective way to update our energy grids to shield them from this sort of storm. It's expensive work, and even burying power lines takes time and energy to complete. But experts agree that it's really just a matter of time before we're hit with some solar weather that's big enough to cause serious problems. So we're going to have to get to work solving this sooner rather than later. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.